Hello everyone. As continuation of the lecture series of thermodynamics in the lecture number 11, our subtopics of discussion today are concept of enthalpy. So we are going to introduce a new thermodynamic parameter or thermodynamic function which is called enthalpy. Also, we are going to discuss heat capacities, two types of heat capacities of gases or simply heat capacity or any substance and Poisson's ratio. In this context, let's start from the heat change at constant volume expression. So we have the first law of thermodynamics where the expression mathematically for finite changes is Q equals to delta U plus P delta V. Okay. So if the heat change takes place at a constant volume, then this equation becomes only delta u because delta v in that case becomes zero. So if heat change takes place at a constant volume where delta v equals to zero, the work done p delta v will also be equal to zero. Then the form of the first law will be reduced to delta u equals to qv. Okay, this p delta v part would vanish. That means the neat heat change is the change in internal energy of the system if volume is kept constant. That means the overall energy is consumed by the system and it has been deposited as its internal energy. That means it is taking place in increasing the internal energy of the system and no work is done since there is no volume change. But if the process is carried out at constant pressure, then from the first law we can write this expression. At constant pressure means what? That if pressure is constant and uh, heat is being absorbed by the system then the gas would expand and it would do some it would perform some work and that work is completely pressure volume work that means mechanical work so in that case we cannot vanish this p delta v term so in that case in the expression of qp that means heat change at constant pressure must be written as delta u plus p delta v now what is delta u delta u is u2 minus u1 and delta V is V2 minus P1. Since pressure is constant, so there is uh, the expression of pressure as well as uh, P as it is. Now, you have to just multiply this P with V2 and minus P1 and then combine them with U2 and U1 like this way. Okay, U2 is combined with P V2 and U, uh, U1 is combined with P V1. So we are getting two functions here. In both functions, there is a difference of internal energy plus mechanical energy of the final state and the initial state, isn't it? So look what happens. Thus we find that the neat heat change at constant pressure is the difference between the final and initial state of the function u plus pv. So if the pressure is kept constant, so p remains as it is. Okay, and in that case, this thing becomes U2 plus PV2 for the final state and U1 plus PV1 for the initial state. And the difference is the heat change at constant pressure. So, a new thermodynamic function is required to be introduced here. And this is known as the enthalpy of the system. Okay, so we are getting acquainted with a new thermodynamic function which is called enthalpy and another name of enthalpy is called uh, another name of enthalpy is heat content okay so let me read it out thus we find that the neat heat change at constant pressure is the difference between the final and initial state of the function u plus pv as it has been read before now here a new thermodynamic function enthalpy or heat content this is another name of enthalpy or h h is the symbol okay this is introduced which is defined as so what is the definition of enthalpy okay from this mathematical experiment previous slide go, let's go to the previous slide this is the difference of enthalpy okay this is the heat absorbed that means difference in enthalpy so this is this should be the expression of delta h so what should be the definition of h enthalpy is the summation of the internal energy and the mechanical energy of the system that means u plus pv okay so it's a state function definitely it has to be a state function the change in enthalpy is the heat change at constant pressure so delta h 
is nothing but QP. Okay, thus H can be mathematically expressed as H equals to U plus PB and its change for finite change delta H equals to QP or delta U plus P delta V. So this expression is very very important for the application of first law of thermodynamics which is known as the thermochemistry. Okay, and by the way I must say that the name of the chapter is thermodynamics as I am writing here but for the chemistry students you may also call chemical thermodynamics okay and sometimes it is also called energetics but simply we are using the term thermodynamics and the application of the first law of thermodynamics in chemistry is thermochemistry where this expression has immense importance okay and h must be a state function why because this is the function of internal energy which is in turn a state function pressure which is in turn a state function as well as is the function of volume which is a state function as well okay so that's all about enthalpy and its change now let's move on to very much uh, related parameter which is known as the heat capacity now if you take a solid or a liquid then the definition of heat capacity is very simple actually we know the term specific heat isn't it specific heat is what to increase the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree celsius the energy required is called heat capacity i'm sorry it is called specific heat now if instead of one gram if you take one gram mole that means one mole of a substance then it becomes heat capacity that means molar specific heat okay and in the form of calculus you can express this like this if c is the symbol of heat capacity then dq by dt is the mathematical expression of heat capacity from the perspective of calculus actually this is the rate of change in heat absorbed or heat released with the change in temperature okay so change in heat energy absorption released or with respect to temperature this is the expression of heat capacity so heat capacity is defined as the heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of a substance by one degree mathematically it is c equals to dq by dt now for the gaseous substance what happens if the gaseous substance absorbs some heat it expands Although solids and liquids also expand, but their expansion is negligible. But here, this expansion cannot be neglected because some mechanical work has to be done if the pressure is kept constant. And in that case, more energy would be absorbed. So there are two terms for gaseous substances. So for gaseous substances, there are two types of heat capacities, for example, uh, such as heat capacity at constant pressure, Cp, and heat capacity at constant volume. C V. Okay, so let's uh, make the expressions of C P and C V. If Q P is the heat change at constant pressure, and Q V is the heat change at constant volume, then this d Q by d T becomes d Q P by d T for C P and d Q V by d T for C V. And you, as we have discussed, that this parameter is nothing but d H, and this parameter is nothing but du so and if the change is finite then instead of d you have to use delta so we know that qp equals to delta h and qv equals to delta u so we can also write dqp equal to dhp that means the enthalpy change at constant pressure and dqv that means heat change at constant volume is nothing but the internal energy change at constant volume to uv okay so cp has some more expressions these two expressions were in terms of q okay so, and q is definitely a path function and here is another trick for you if you are asked that dq is an exact differential or it's not an exact differential then your answer should be dq is definitely not an exact differential or perfect differential. But if you are asked that what about dqp or what about dqb, 
then your answer should be something different your answer should be dqp is a perfect differential because dqp is nothing but dhp or dqp is also a perfect differential so you have to take into account this small things very minutely dq is not an exact differential but dqp and dqb are exact differentials because they are nothing but dh and du okay and if you even do not put this constant terms pressure and volume then also it means that this is actually heat change at constant pressure and this is actually heat change at constant volume because we have already come to know that heat change at constant volume is nothing but the heat internal energy change and heat change at constant pressure is nothing but the enthalpy change okay so we have the expressions of cp and cv in terms of h and u as we have two expressions for finite changes delta h by delta t and for infinitesimal changes dh by dt at constant pressure similarly for cv for finite change delta h by delta t and for infinitesimally small changes it should be du by dt at constant volume okay and if you multiply them uh, cross multiplication if you uh, undergo cross multiplication then you would get two more expressions like delta h equal to cp delta t and du equals to cb delta t for finite changes these two are also very important for the uh, thermochemistry part okay and another two expressions for infinitesimal changes if the change is infinitesimally small then dh equal to cp dt and du equals to cb dt so these expressions which are highlighted in blue colors are very important for you now move on to our next and last topic of this lecture is Poisson's ratio okay which is denoted as gamma and this is nothing but the ratio of cp and cb as you come to know that cp is involving some mechanical work so it is it is always greater than uh, cb and uh, later you have to calculate the difference between cp and cb and you know it very well that cp minus cb is r which is the gas constant but cp and cb has some difference constant difference but they have some ratio also okay sometimes it is uh, uh, it is sometimes it's 5 by 3 sometimes it is 7 by 5 okay difference is 2 always but the values are different according to the atomicity of the gases because this is applicable for the gaseous substances cp and cv not for liquids and solids so uh, gases have their own characteristics such as whether it is monatomic gas or diatomic gas or triatomic gas or much higher then at least for three types of gases monatomic diatomic and triatomic this gamma that means the Poisson's ratio have different values okay and since cp is greater than cb therefore this ratio gamma is always greater than one and you will mm, you'll be surprised to know that for this monatomic gases like helium neon argon krypton gamma is 1.67 that is 5 by 3 calorie okay 5 calorie by 3 calorie similarly for diatomic gases like o2 oxygen nitrogen hydrogen for carbon monoxide they are uh, they would have gamma 1.4 so this is very surprising that whatever be the gas it doesn't matter okay uh, the Poisson's ratio is always same for them okay this is very interesting and for triatomic gases like ozone carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide gamma is 1.21 so it has been just simply written as 1.2 so that's all for today's lecture thank you have a nice day